Good morning. Welcome to this online worship service from the Federated Church of Green Lake. I am the Reverend Karen Gigax Rodriguez. I'm pastor of the church and today we are celebrating the fact that we have been in covenant and shared ministry together for 25 years. So my thoughts will reflect a little bit on what does it mean to have that kind of commitment to a church and its pastor for a quarter of a century and uh, where God is in all of this. So I'm grateful to share this with you this morning. I'm grateful to welcome you to this worship service. And we would love to hear from you throughout the service. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, then you're able to chat along with us and we would love to hear your comments and see your comments as we chat today, especially today, besides sharing what we might be grateful for and what our prayer requests might be. I am curious to know your reflections, your thoughts on 25 years of shared ministry, your memories, um, highlights, and all of those special remembrances that you might have. And today we're also going to be sharing in communion. And um, so if you have communion elements at your home, we'd love for you to get those ready. I welcome you. I welcome you whether you worship with us at the YouTube premiere time, whether you worship with us at some time during the week, whether you're in the area or not, and whether this might be even the first time, you are welcomed. May the Holy Spirit connect us soul to soul, spirit to spirit, child of God to child of God as we worship today. As I always like to do, I like to begin with uh, things that I'm grateful for, and I'd love to know what you are grateful for, if you'd like to list anything in the chat area this morning. Um, I have some gratitude that I'd like to share. I had a number of good friends and family come from far away places to celebrate 25 years, and I'm so grateful that they took that time out of their lives to come and celebrate with us, I'm grateful for safe travels for them. I'm grateful for the beautiful fall weather that we are having outside right now. And I'm really grateful for the successful Harvest Fest worship service last week. It was wonderful. It was so good to be outside. And that is our um, 20th worship service, the 21st year that we've been doing this. Last year we couldn't, so it was so, it was so wonderful. What are you grateful for this morning? And what would you list in our chat area as we share together with God and with one another the gratitude that is in our hearts? As we do this, I'd like to uh, have us pray this prayer together that we pray every Sunday. Lord, you are an abundant giver. There is nothing that I have that you have not given me. The way of your kingdom is the way of generosity. Help us to honor you with our resources. Free us from the deceit of riches. Lead us on the path of generosity. For your glory, Lord. For the abundance of our own lives. And for the sake of others. Amen. And as we look at people who might be joining us online because they're unable to be with us in person today and people who are part of our prayer list, I have these people that I'd like us especially to keep in prayer um, this morning. We want to pray for John D. We want to continue to pray for healing in his lungs and for strength in his breathing. The same prayer request for Bob T, for lung healing in his life. For Cal M, we want to pray for recovery and for strength and healing. Henry, who is an 18-month-old, and we want to pray for Henry this morning. Dale, who is going to be having some chemotherapy treatments. Bill, who remains hospitalized and recovering. For all who are having any kind of cancer therapy treatments, for those who are dealing with COVID and COVID exposures, for our college students this week, and a special prayer request for the First Baptist Church of Port-au-Prince, Haiti, that went through some very devastating um, trauma last week. 
So as we uh, join in a time of prayer together, I would ask that you would join with me in uh, keeping these thoughts in our prayers. And I would also ask for you to also include any prayers that might be listed in our chat area this morning. But let us pray together. Lord, we welcome your Holy Spirit with us this morning, and we come before you and come before your throne of mercy and grace with the needs that we have listed here and the needs that are upon our hearts. And we know that we can entrust them to you. So we lift up in love these individuals whom we've named before you this morning. We lift in love those who are part of our chat. We give you thanks, God, for the ability to share in a significant amount of time of ministry together in all the ways that you have led us as a church. We pray for our world, Lord, and we especially remember the First Baptist Church in Port-au-Prince and ask that you would bring healing and consolation and peace to a very traumatic situation. Lord, we pray... Um, for the specific requests that are listed in our chat area, for the unspoken requests of our hearts, and we offer you these in a moment of quietness. Be with us now, O Lord, as we share together the prayer that your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture readings this morning, one first comes from the book of Psalms, the very first psalm of this book, and the other from Ephesians. And they are not lectionary readings, but they are readings that came to my heart as I prayed about what to share on this special occasion. So the first, Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread or seat, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all they do, they prosper. And from Ephesians 3, verses 14 to 21. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now to him, who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we all can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen.
John and Kim, that's a favorite praise song. When we first moved to Ripon, that was about seven years into the ministry of our, uh, here with the church, the church gave us a gift certificate for a local nursery, and Hugo and I went and bought two red maple trees, and we were so excited to plant these beautiful trees, and we looked forward to the beautiful red leaves that they would have like during this time of the year. We planted them on opposite sides of the backyard with great hopes for how they would grow and look beautiful in the fall. We didn't know that we had planted one of the trees along the pathway that the herd of deer would take every night through our, our yard they discovered this tree and we didn't discover until it was too late for the tree that it had become a wayside stop for head scratching and bark biting we tried to protect the wounded bark by wrapping it and by putting a fence around it and we waited eagerly for the spring to see if it had survived that winter but no 
it had not survived. In fact, um, it was so dead that one day we woke up and the main trunk of the tree was just leaning. It had just like completely, completely died. So we pulled out the main trunk and grieved our loss, wondering existentially what it meant that this gift didn't flourish. Another winter came and went and another new spring came and we noticed that there were some shoots coming out from where the roots were from that dead or supposed dead stump. And I began to look on this tree like a Jesse tree, you know, uh, the Old Testament reading that says, and out of the shoot of Jesse shall come a branch. And there, were, there was, there was a shoot out of this dead stump. In fact, there was about four shoots out of this dead stump. And so after a couple of years, we cut it back to two shoots. We set a fence up around the shoots to protect them from the deer. And to our delight, they began to thrive. Now the other tree had also had minimal deer damage to it, but it survived and it has now grown to be about three stories high or tall. But this Jesse tree now, with two strong trunks growing straight and tall, it's only two stories high, but you never would have known that its first main branch had died. These two trees speak as a metaphor for me of 25 years of shared ministry. As I became slightly distraught over trying to find an image or the right image to encapsulate this momentous occasion, I happened upon Psalm 1, and it's a favorite. And I think there's a reason why it's the first psalm in the First Covenants hymn book. It has this beautiful imagery, and it says, A wise person is like a tree planted by a stream of water, yielding its fruit in its season. Our church is planted by a spring-fed lake of water, and it has yielded much fruit over its 75 years of existence. And as I joined the Federated Tree for about one-third of its current life, I have also planted myself like a tree beside not only the beauty of the lake, but by the stream of the Holy Spirit, which has fed my entire ministry. This celebration is somewhat about me, but it's equally about we. We, the church, in covenant, in commitment together. This has been a partnership, a grove in Green Lake. And like my two backyard trees, we have weathered pain and suffering from bypassing forces who and that have threatened our livelihood. We have weathered and we have flourished in some amazing ways. During my tenure here together with you, we've welcomed some of the best national leaders here to our church to speak and to guide us and to lead us in worship. We've welcomed Leonard Sweet and Pete Scazzaro, Brad Berglund and Mark LeVon Vincent. We participated in programs like New Church, New Century, which helped us vision where the Holy Spirit was moving as we crossed into this new millennia. We've taken our church out of the building. We've gone now to the county fair and to the Harvest Fest worship, and we had pulpit and choir exchanges with some of our African-American brothers and sisters, colleagues in the Milwaukee area. And we've done the hatching, the matching, and the dispatching work of a church. We have commissioned missionaries to India. We have ordained three women to ministry, and we are prayerfully encouraging Kurt Kaufman as he enters into the ministry. We've uh, had multiple forms of worship and expression to let the spirit come from us in worshiping our God. We've had traditional and contemporary and blended and contemplative and youth-led and children-led programs. We've had VBS programs. As I looked over pictures from the last 25 years, we've had hundreds of children come through our children's programming. 
And now we're doing online ministry and worship. Over 25 years, we've had five choir directors and seven Christian education directors. And then I just want to give a shout out to Jan. Jan has always been there, Jan Saker and me. We are a team and we have done this together for 25 years. And I joke with her, Jan, I don't want to do this without you. We've even flourished in ways during this COVID season. We opened our building to the Green Lake School. We started a national online book study. This book study draws people from the East, the West, the North and the South as we uh, look at social issues and theological implications that there are for us as followers of Christ in this current time. And we have flourished over this past year, um, up until just recently, we have flourished by the generosity to sustain our financial resources. Now I will share with you that we are now weathering a time where we need that generosity again. We need that flourishing. We need that uh, commitment to sustaining financially our ministry. And I'll share more about that at the end in the announcement time. But we've also flourished with sabbaticals because every five years, after my initial 12 years here, I have taken a sabbatical almost every five. One year it was every what, after six. But those periods of intentional rest and study have helped me not burn out and have helped us as a church not grow stale. But we've also had moments of deepest challenge and we don't need to revisit all of those but maybe the most recent one this one of the health issue that has become a cultural issue and then a political issue now resulting in a loyalty issue. It's challenged us in really um, forceful ways as a church and as a community committed to one another. So I was tapped on the shoulder by Psalm 1, which speaks not of sitting in a seat of scoffers, and that's really what got my attention at first because we have too many sideline scoffers, critical and condemning voices that are not helpful nor healthy for a church. Scoffing, murmuring, gossiping, negativity has hurt all of our churches, like the deer that bites at the bark. So we've had our trying times, and we've had those times when we've flourished flourished three stories high, and we've had those times where we've been near death even, or really struggling. But through it all, God has provided, and I am grateful for the trees that we are. Trees always grow towards the light. We have always grounded ourselves not in denominational differences, but in the light of our faith and the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, our Christ, who have been the light and the life of our lives. Every Sunday for 25 years, and every Sunday I have been granted the privilege of leading us in worship, I begin by letting my roots drink deeply of the water of the Spirit. And ours, my beloved brothers and sisters, is not a hollow core, looking good on the outside, but lacking structural integrity and substance on the inside. Ours is a solid core. You can tell by the rings of our years, of the years of plenty and of the years of want, but we are not rotten, we are solid, and we are not done yet. Like a married couple, it's good to renew commitments and vows to one another, and forever, however many years God has in store for us this side of 25. I believe that 25 years here 32 years in total ordained ministry, and even more before that, have given me a lot of wisdom to share. 
I truly believe that because of what I have learned and the work that I am committed to doing, especially this being open for Christ's continual transforming my mind, renewing and transforming my mind, my heart, and my soul, and my spirit. This process that Christ is doing in me for the sake of others and for the world, that right now I have the best to offer. I'm excited for what the future is going to hold. And I commit to you for whatever is God's will for us following 25 years, however many more, to begin every day in prayerful gratitude and posture for God to use me on your behalf, yielding to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I commit to continue to nurture our congregation in the love that is described in the Ephesians reading. I commit to serving our church and our community with the absolute best that I have. I commit, and Hugo and I commit to both financially supporting our church. We always have, and we will continue. But most of all, I commit, and finally I commit, to giving and receiving love. You know my story. You know the first time that I felt the voice of God really speak to me was when I was 14 years old and my mother was having a life and death health crisis. Faced with that crisis, I heard the voice of God say to me in my mind, the only thing that matters is the love you give and the love you receive. That's why I love the Ephesians reading. It speaks to that love. And it is impossible, like 25 years, to try to summarize 25 years, it's impossible in this brief time to summarize love. The love that comes from the God who loved the world so much that he sent his son into the world to transform us into loving people for the sake of the world that same love that never condemns the world but brings salvation to the world. It's truly what makes us grow spiritually and in all ways. Generations in my family used to stumble when trying to say the words, I love you. They felt it, but they found it difficult to say out loud. I'm grateful and thankful that it's not as true anymore. But I want to say to you, my fellow members, my church members, my friends, my family and community members, I love you. I love you with the best of my abilities, with the most of Christ that I can allow stream through me to you. I love you and I commit to loving you. May we as we continue to receive and give God's love, may we continue to be wise like the tree, growing like the tree, adding rings of growth and transformation to our years. And may God bless us. Amen. forgiven because you were forsaken I'm accepted you were condemned I'm alive and well your spirit is within me because you died and rose again I'm forgiven You were condemned. 
lives within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. come to a time of communion, I just want to share again how grateful I have been for the many times that we have sat down at this banquet feast together, and I'm so grateful that we can do this together online as well. You remember when Jesus had his last meal with his disciples. He took bread, and before sharing it, asked a blessing. Would you pray with me? Lord, bless this bread 
that we break together in our homes, in your spirit. May it be for us your body nourishing us in our brokenness and bringing new life and resurrection power and healing to us. May we understand that we do this as a community, even though we are separated. We are one body in you. We give you thanks, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus took the bread, and he broke it, and he said that this is my body broken for you. Take and eat, and as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Amen. And Jesus took the cup and before sharing it with his disciples, asked a blessing, would you pray with me? Lord, this cup is a cup of forgiveness poured out upon us so that we would know it is your love that is supreme, not any sense of condemnation. As we receive this cup of forgiveness, we receive your forgiveness for us and we let your forgiveness flow through us in loving ways to those around us. Bless this cup for your transforming work and power in our lives. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And after blessing the cup, Jesus shared the cup with his disciples. As we move to a time of announcements, I'd like to invite you, if you're interested, to be part of our book study. We're reading this book, Dear White Peacemakers, by Oshita Moore, and um, we are having wonderful conversations about it, and we would love to have you join us. If you're interested, please email me, and I will send you the Zoom invitation. On site at church, we have these contemplative worship opportunities. Tuesday, we do centering prayer from 1215 to 1235 in the sanctuary. And Sundays, Divine Hour Liturgy from 815 to 845 in the sanctuary. I'd like to share with you uh, these ways by which you can support the church financially. You can send a check to the church. You can send a bank check to the church. You can uh, use PayPal, which you can find on our church website. Or you can sign up for electronic funds transfer, and that you sign up with uh, Carrie at the church office. And I'd like to add a special note. We've come now to the fall season, and always in the fall season, we begin to share where we are in our budget and where we need to be by the end of the year. So we have a budget of some, um, somewhere over $200,000, and uh, that budget is basic ministry budget here at the church. There's no frills in this budget. Right now, as of the first Sunday of October, we stand needing $76,000 to finish the year in strength. Now, in years past, we've had this kind of a gap, maybe not quite as big as this, but um, I am a firm believer that with all things we don't worry, but that we are grateful. And our gratitude is, is huge for everyone who has financially supported the church. But we lift our prayers up to God that we might remain financially strong for two reasons. Number one, we want to be financially strong. We want to the end of the year in the black. But the other reason is because by the time we get to November, we need to know how to plan for the year 2022, and we always base our financial plans on what we've had come in. So thank you for your financial support. And if you can, if in whatever ways, um, because we're not meeting in person, <clears throat> if you're watching us online or 
for whatever reason, if you haven't sent in any givings yet, we'd love and appreciate your givings and financial support. But help us close that gap. Help us to do what we've done for the 25 years that I've been here. Every year we've gone from strength to strength. We've gone from financial solidness to financial solidness. So thank you for helping us to do that. As we end the worship service this morning, again, it's been such a privilege to share. It's been like amazing to think about it. 25 years is 300 Sundays. And um, that's a wonderful amount of time to be together and to commit together. As Martin Luther King says, longevity has its place. Let us continue to pray for our ministry together. Let us recovenant and renew our commitment to one another. And let us see where God will take us in these next years. I pray that God bless you and keep you that God lift the light of his countenance upon you, that God grant you his peace. Amen.